My name is Gail Spring and I'm the Adjunct Associate Professor of Scientific Photography at RMIT University in Melbourne, Australia. I've worked in forensic and biomedical photography for over 35 years and have encountered many imaging problems in that area. I'd like to share with you now a few tutorials and demonstrations addressing some of those issues that I've discovered. This tutorial is going to cover infrared and uh, ultraviolet mostly conversions for uh, modern cameras. Um, general photography and general cameras are sensitive primarily to white light, what we see and, and would normally record average pictures. But in the area of science and, and forensics, uh, we might want to look at images that are illuminated in the ultraviolet or in the infrared, and so we need specialized equipment. Now we can use the same kind of cameras that we have, and simply do a conversion uh, of those. All conversions need to be professionally done because not only do they have to insert a filter, they also have to do adjustments on the focusing. So this is gonna be a brief overview of just a few things to remember if you're looking at converting to uh, infrared system or to an ultraviolet system. This camera uh, is converted to infrared. Now when I look through the view, viewfinder, it will look like any other camera. Uh, I can see uh, everything that I, I want to see. The infrared filter is actually placed right in front of the sensor. So when I take the picture, at that moment I take the picture, only infrared actually makes the image. That filter is visibly opaque. Uh, we can't see through it. It leaks only in the uh, infrared. This is an example of the type of filter that's in there, and if I now demonstrate this by holding what appears to be a totally black filter in front of a light source, you might see just a little bit of red leakage coming through. And what you won't see, because your eye is not sensitive to it, is that infrared is also coming through this filter. This is the type of filter that's placed right in front of your sensor. We need a source of infrared then to illuminate our, our image and we can uh, use various things and including standard uh, electronic flash. They put out quite a bit of infrared and so they still have the problem of fall off at great distances but this illuminates infrared so for anything close we can use that. We can also use any kind of a hot light source like tungsten lights. Uh, any type of light source that em emits heat. What we cannot use is fluorescence. Fluorescence does not emit any uh, infrared. Let me come over now to uh, ultraviolet because it's very similar, but in a few technical ways, very different. This camera has been converted to be an ultraviolet camera. Again, a filter has been placed in front of the sensor I can see through the viewfinder as if it's a normal camera, so I can focus and I can compose. But when I click the shutter, the light comes through the lens and ends up hitting the sensor through that filter, which filters out all white light and only allows the ultraviolet uh, to come through. Once again, we have a filter that's similar. It appears to be opaque, although this one is slightly mirror-like because uh, of, its, of the way it's manufactured. But if I now put a light, this in front of a light source, you can see no light comes through at all. So it does not leak infrared in any way. It only passes ultraviolet. And this is the type of filter that you would want to be professionally installed in your camera. That filter then allows ultraviolet to come through. Now we need a light source. Once again, strangely, we can turn to electronic flashes for an ultraviolet source with one slight modification. Whereas infrared comes out of your electronic flash, um, as infrared directly from it, manufacturers of electronic flashes have a filter that's placed in front of this uh, light source to absorb ultraviolet because ultraviolet is traditionally not a wavelength that we want. It makes things look blue, sometimes overexposed. What we do simply is, in an identical unit as this, we remove that filter so we have a bare bulb. And if the manufacturer has not coated 
that bulb with the gold yellow coating that is sometimes used to absorb ultraviolet, we then have, as in this case, we have a very good source of ultraviolet radiation. If I simply placed the manufacturer's filter back over the front, it would not be emitting ultraviolet. It would be emitting white light, so we would think we still get the same amount of light, but to an ultraviolet camera, it would be as if it didn't go off at all. So, one slight confusion that does arise in the conversions between infrared and ultraviolet is in the days of film, we had the infrared filter that we discussed a minute ago. We also had what appears to be almost the same type of filter that was an ultraviolet filter. Now let me show you what happens when I put this in front of a light source. You can see that there is a little red leakage. That didn't matter with film because your traditional black and white films were sensitive to ultraviolet, but they were not sensitive to infrared. So leaking infrared was not a problem. In digital photography, however, we have a sensor that is very sensitive to infrared, and so the classic ultraviolet filter for film use, known as an 18A or 18B filter, really can't be used with digital photography anymore. And this is why any conversion of these cameras should be done by a professional uh, camera repair like the Camera Clinic in Melbourne. Uh, they know what filter, to match with what camera. Now let me make one point about camera model selection as well. As manufacturers change from model to model, they make refinements in their traditional imaging uh, technology and in their sensors. Some sensors are inherently more sensitive to ultraviolet than others. And again, your professional camera repair uh, and conversion outfits will know which cameras and which filters actually will work well. Don't just decide that you're going to use a particular camera because it's no longer, uh, you're not uh, any longer using it, so you'll convert it. It may not actually work well. Now just a few words on the lenses, the objectives that we're going to be using uh, on the cameras. A couple of things to consider. Uh, I discussed uh, the infrared conversion camera and uh, effectively any lens that you wish to use, modern uh, old lens will work just fine. They all pass infrared and that isn't an issue uh, at all. If you are, however, using ultraviolet, you need a lens that passes as much ultraviolet as it can and most modern lenses don't pass ultraviolet because it's actually seen as a negative uh, rather than a positive. So you need to check uh, with the uh, people that are converting your uh, camera to be able to discuss what kind of lens might work best for your particular application. Uh, there's less choices in the ultraviolet end of photography than there is in the infrared end. Many of you in forensic science would already be familiar with the Rofen Polylight made here in Melbourne. Uh, this device emits different wavelengths of, of colors of light, uh, as well as it emits uh, in the infrared and in the ultraviolet, very appropriate for our camera conversions. Uh, but it's a wide spectrum uh, uh, light source that is used in forensic science to investigate and analyze different materials. We use uh, infrared and ultraviolet in anything from uh, differences in, in vegetation, uh, reflectance of infrared, uh, through to, say, uh, uh, decomposition in, in bodies that may show tattoos. We can sometimes bring those out in areas that you can't see visibly. Certainly in trace evidence and things like gunshot uh, residue, uh, things that, that are going to show, uh, reveal different wavelengths in infrared and in ultraviolet. It's a very challenging area and there isn't a simple uh, solution to any of these problems. You have to experiment with filters, you have to experiment with cameras, and you have to experiment with uh, exposures uh, as well. But it is challenging and I highly recommend that you look into uh, a professional conversion of infrared and a professional conversion of ultraviolet uh, and learn how to use both of those effectively.